So hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Today, I'm going to talk about <coughs> interrupts, the hidden world of Linux performance. Uh, you've probably seen this. You get an alert. The application latency is high, but when you go to the dashboard and see everything, the CPU usage is below 30% or something. And you try to understand that, OK, so my code is not the bottleneck, so it's not using that much CPU. But what is? And this isn't a bug. It's like a paradox caused by a hidden workload in the Linux kernel. This is the CPU. These are the CPU thieves. Every time a network card gets a packet or a disk finishes a read, it sends an interrupt signal that forces the CPU to actually stop what it was doing and uh, focus on something else. And if this happens thousands of times per second, the CPU is constantly distracted, even if it's not busy in a traditional sense. And why should you care? What is this direct link between the interrupts and the problems that you see? So it is like a cause and effect relationship. The more I.O. your application performs, the more interrupts it generates. This can happen in like file intensive applications or some applications that use a lot of network time. The timer interrupts in your code like using sleep or a set timeout function. And even like using keyboard and mice. It's like when you're developing a game and you need to use a lot of user input, it would cause the program to have an input lag when the CPU is constantly trying to process these interrupts. So we have this fundamental problem. Hardware needs CPU but we can't afford to stop our application for too long. To solve this, the Linux kernel uses a clever two-stage strategy to handle interrupts efficiently. This is the separation between the hard IRQ and the soft IRQ. The easiest way to think about this is like a two-stage emergency response. The hard IRQ is the first stage. It's an initial urgent alert that sends directly from a hardware device, and it needs to be taken care of immediately. Uh, it's something that we don't want to froze the whole system so that uh, nothing else can run. Its only job is to do the bare absolute minimum and schedule the second task. And the second stage is the soft IRQ. It is like the deferred cleanup crew that runs as soon as possible after the hard IRQ, but like in a safer context where the interrupts are enabled. And this allows it to do the heavier, more complex work, like processing the actual data. So how do these interrupts affect which codes get to run on the CPU? It's actually the impact on the scheduling. The hard IRQs are like thieves. They aren't scheduled by the OS. They simply interrupt the system and steal the CPU from whatever it was running and whatever application was there. Um, but soft IRQs are a little bit more organized. Uh, when the system is like on a load, the kernel has a special thread for them. But this thread also has a higher priority, so it also stealing jobs from other tasks. And you can actually see this thread in, uh, when you run a top command on your machine. And uh, you can understand that, OK, this is what's using my CPU time. And why does it matter and how we will see it is the impact on real-time performance, which is like the most sensible thing. Like systems in finances, robotics, or audio processing, the biggest enemy would be the unpredictability. And the interrupts are what, it, they, what cause the unpredictability. And the problem is that when the hard IRQ comes, the interrupt is disabled, 
and devices cannot send any more interrupts. So this causes a latency, this delay. And when these interrupts are coming one after another, we don't know how much time would it take so that it can process what is happening. And this causes a jitter that we don't know how much time is it taking for everything. And this uncertainty is something that cannot be handled but by real-time services. So what should we do? The first step is always to listen to the kernel. We can use uh, tools like TOP to see how much percentage of the CPU is actually used on the uh, interrupts. And then you will see, OK, so these are the interrupts that are causing these problems. Another thing is that you can look at this directory, proc interrupts. And it shows you a number of data. You can see uh, each row is like showing each unique interrupt, and each column is showing each CPU processor. And in the description, you can actually see which device has caused this interrupt. And now that you know that, OK, these interrupts are the problem of my code, <coughs> As application developers, you cannot rewrite kernel drivers, but you can actually influence how many interrupts your code generates. And the strategy is simple. Just use less I.O. operations. Every time your network or disk operation causes an interrupt, you can batch your work. Instead of writing byte by byte into a file, you can have a buffer and write into your file for like a four kilobyte chunk of data, or like instead of sending 1,000 tiny network requests, you can send one large request. But what if that's not enough? What if you're facing a massive DDoS attack with millions of packets per second? In extreme cases, the problem isn't just a number of interrupts. It's the fact that every single packet has to travel all the way to the net kernel's network stack just to be inspected and potentially dropped. And this is actually really inefficient. So the most modern solution doesn't try to actually uh, optimize the interrupt path, but they bypass it entirely. And that brings us to XDP or the express data path which is a Linux kernel framework that uses eBPF programs to process network packets at the lowest level on the network card driver immediately before it even goes to the main kernel network stack. And it's actually a really cool way to, for DDoS medications or load balancing. So to wrap things up, the next time that you see a slow application with a low CPU usage, remember that low CPU doesn't mean an idle system. It might just be distracted. And that distraction is often caused by a hidden workload, hardware and software interrupts. They are essential but costly, but allows your software to talk to the world. And finally, the most practical takeaway as developers, we can directly influence this by batching our I.O., larger requests, fewer interrupts, and a happier and more efficient kernel. Thank you for your attention. I'm Shay. I'm a site reliability engineer at Tony's. Uh, feel free to see the slides and everything, and reach out to me if you had any more questions. Thank you so much.